Hello Abacus user. Welcome to Abacus Acumen for quick and sound learning. Today's session we are going to do a heat transfer problem, steady state heat transfer problem. But the specific to this particular problem will be doing heat transfer going through two different walls. So right now on my screen what you see is a furnace and uh, you see how the heat flux is getting out of this furnace and we'll just quickly show you so let's plot so this is the how the heat flux get out and then we'll also see how the temperature distribution across the composite wall so this is nothing but a pizza furnace so pizza furnace in today's uh, uh, world the furnace outer is a brick inner is a concrete and then inside it's hot and outside it's a normal temperature outside temperature and then how the heat uh, transfer to this we are going to solve this with two two uh, specific heat transfer mode one is a conduction and convection and then the other thing is how we can model the interface between the two composite wall that will be learning and then we'll also show you how to get a vector heat heat flux vector and how the heat what particular direction heat is going out so that's what actually we'll plot so before starting this problem we'll just just quickly go to the drawing board and first understand what what we are going to do so we are uh, today we are going to solve the heat transfer through two wall configuration so there are two different wall two different material we are going to do with a steady state condition we'll have also we'll do one more transient problem but the current problem is steady state condition now abacus acumen have at least uh, the three three problem done on a steady state condition but then uh, some feedback come is we want to really get the steady state condition to a real time example and then this is not a latest pizza oven this is the old pizza oven you see the brick here and uh, the the latest one you will have a brick and then inside we have a concrete so there are the this is what actually the composite uh, uh, configuration of two wall and then then inside you have hot water hot air so inside this will be hot air so it's hot air so there is a convection going on inside this so hot hot air it will be moving up cooling down so you have already a convection going on inside this and then cold air will be taking heat out and inside this and this there is a conduction mode so heat from furnace through air getting transferred to the inner inner wall then through concrete it will go by conduction so this is based on the thermal conductivity of the concrete then it will be going out from here to here with a k2 that is on the brick side so we'll be using conduction convection again this is three mode quickly conduction when the the it transfer through the metal and then then convection is when it transfer through air and radiation is like when the two sur two hot surface radiate heat towards each other just uh, before modeling this uh, this uh, easy problem but the learning is composite wall two different material and how how we are going to model this interface so two different mesh and then how you can uh, model this interface this is this is 3 meter this is 3 meter and then then inside uh, inside dimension is 1.2 meter so this is what is a brick which will be 3 meter and 1.2 meter and uh, this inside is 1 meter this is concrete so and specific to concrete it is overall dimension 1.2 meter by 1.2 thermal conductivity will be 0 0.01 and then brick is a good uh, heat insulator so for the brick it is 0 0.057 watt per meter kelvin we are going to use si units so here is a si unit so we are going to 
heat flux will is like a watt meter will be dimension and kelvin will be a temperature things now inside temperature of this uh, brick pizza oven the temperature is almost like 100 degree see this is nothing but 1273 kelvin this will be the convective heat transfer coefficient so this is h1 so this is nothing but your h a dt this is your convection heat transfer and for the conduction we are using the conductivity so this will be k a dt by dx so we use a conductivity here we are going to use h area and area is going to calculate based on the ge ge geometry and temperature is we are going to give the inner and outer temperature so it will calculate on that so inside it will be hot air so the convective heat transfer coefficient is on higher side it is 0 0.208 watt per meter kelvin and outside air air which is at the room temperature 20 degree c which is nothing but a 293 kelvin we are going to use a si unit it will take heat out but since the temperature is low the convective heat transfer coefficient is also low 0 0.068 if the air is hot its convective heat transfer coefficient is high because of density because it once air is getting heated it become light and it move forward and the up upward direction it move and that's where actually the convective heat transfer coefficient is higher side so we'll start modeling this now we'll we'll uh, go to the um, we'll, we'll go to solve this problem so i'll say new we'll set up it working directory already i set up so we'll just uh, we'll just start this so let's uh, first part we'll put is uh, let's put brick first so we are going to use 2d element there will be no, no third direction because it's uh, infinite uh, the the third direction is also higher side so it's fairly to assume this is a 2d heat transfer problem we can have this like a 6 meter deformable 2d shell 6 meter and then we'll first put 0 comma 0 just to take a center and then minus 1.5 comma minus 1.5 1.5 comma 1.5 so so we get a outer two dimension which will can quickly plot it you have done that now we'll just uh, put the the inner is uh, minus 0 0.6 and minus 0 0.6 0 0.6 comma 0 0.6 and you put that so we quickly done the brick so brick is done we'll just quickly define the metal property for the brick so the material one will be brick and we are just going to give one metal property that is conductivity so it's a steady state condition so we are not going to give a specific heat and mass and density because it's a steady state condition and the conductivity is 0 0.057 0 0.0057 and then in case the conductivity also change with temperature if you have temperature data and then multiple data then you can you can also put uh, multiple data for that but in case you don't have then 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 uh, uh, we have just one data so that we put for the conductivity for the brick and then we'll put section as a brick homogenize plane stress you select and then we are done and then we'll quickly assign that Uh, we assign that so it is already assigned to the the brick now once brick is done we'll create a concrete 
so concrete is outer is minus 0 0.6 comma z minus 0 0.6 and 0 0.6 comma 0 0.6 so this is outer boundary of uh, concrete and then it is like minus 0 0.5 comma minus 0 0.5 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 and we can have this one so we are quickly done the concrete also we'll put a property for concrete and then we'll put a concrete conductivity here the conductivity of uh, the the concrete is 0 0.01 0 0.01 so we define that we will define the section for concrete so we define the concrete now We'll also create assembly for this two, and then we'll just check how how they look. So inside is a uh, the 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 concrete, and outside is a brick. Now for that, define an interface between these two. We need to have define a tie contact here. So since they are in closely connection with it, you can use thermal contact also or you can use a tie contact here we are going to use tie first we'll have a separate video on a thermal contact and then if you want that video please please put a request on our channel we'll just make a thermal contact video for you and that f for that we need outer surface to give a convective heat transfer coefficient for hot air we need a inner surface also we require outer surface so first we'll we'll go to the second part and go to the pre surface will create brick inner brick inner is required you select one then you hold a shift key then you can select all this is mainly to get a tie connection with the concrete and then you required a brick outer brick outer you require to define a convective heat transfer coefficient for outside room temperature that is 20 degrees C here so that's you are done now for concrete also you need to create two surfaces concrete outer which will be concrete outer will be having a tie connection with a brick inner this is we are done and then we'll create concrete inner so that's what actually you define a concrete inner now we define part assembly we'll go to the step step will say it it's a furnace heat transfer and then select the heat transfer it will be a steady state condition so it's a steady state condition you can start with one but I generally preferred with a point one one of the reason just I want to take a multiple uh, step is then you can see the animation if you put one then you will not able to see the how the animation so that's where actually I put so just put one and then just in initial timing into you put a point one so we define the the step we'll now define the interactions now interaction first we will define a tie contact so go to the constant manager create and then first put a tie tie master not specific event but since heat is going to transfer from inside to outside so take the master surface from the the concrete outer so concrete outer you highlight it 
and then slave surface you take a brick inner and then you just put a tie and then you remove the address because then it will just pull the nodes on the master surface and just specify like a 0 0.001 meter as a the distance specify the distance so anything in that distance it, it will get tied which is it will just tie the boat to both surface so so we are done that now we need to now define the important thing is the the film question how we are going to define a convective heat transfer coefficient that is also the important parameter and uh, we'll be having the learning how to define that specific thing uh, yeah the convective heat transfer coefficient for the inner wall and brick so we'll we'll define it like you go to the interaction manager create and then you say inner whatever name you give and then you see film surface film condition so we are going to select the inside surface film condition and then we say concrete inner and the film coefficient is 0 0.01 and the sink temperature is 1273 that is what is the inside 1000 degree C is a temperature then you will create outer which is nothing but brick outer will select and then then it's a 293 i need to check what is the number for this 293 and 0 0.068 why the low number for the the film coefficient at the outer because the root temperature is 20 degrees c so there you will not see a natural movement of air so the the convective heat transfer coefficient is low inside furnace you have high degree high temperature air density we will reduce it become light and it will start moving fast that's where actually you see the film coefficient on the higher side so we define the the both film coefficient uh, inner and outer now now we already define the the step now we'll just just put a a quickly a mesh now the mesh mainly mesh for the 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 concrete will go for fine mesh and for for brick will go for a coarse mesh so so we'll go to the mesh the part the concrete one you go and select cord and middle axis and then you put 0 0.02 which will be a fine enough mesh and then select it as a heat transfer select this as a heat transfer element so once you select the heat transfer element it will say dc to d4 a 400 linear heat transfer quadrilateral element we select that and then we'll put a mesh so you get a concrete mesh now now we'll put a brick for brick also we will go to the cord uh, middle axis will select and then the seed we are going to take is a uh, 0 0.1 and then then we will also select this a uh, heat transfer element so we selected the heat transfer element and then then we will put a mesh so we have now now even assembly you see the two mesh one is one is very coarse and one is very fine because then then you can map a quite a good uh, temperature distribution across this and the heat flux going out and the other the important thing is the interface already we are tied so we don't have to worry for the mesh dissimilarity this is a one of the learning out of this video you'll you'll you understand how to do this this thing now we define almost everything we define inside film outside film temperature we have defined conductivity everything now we'll just just check the the output we'll just add output field output you will just put a field output specifically on the thermal side temperature it flux you put HPL I think that's uh, too easy enough for us I will quickly define the job uh, create 
वर्नेस हिट ट्रांसफर and then we'll see how it looks and then we'll just say first we'll do a data check we'll, if there is any issue in data check then we'll check at the data uh, data check and in case there is no data check issue then then we'll just submit it to run uh, we'll also just 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 have a how the input file looks like So input file we have node definition and then you see the specific to the 2D heat transfer elements then you generated everything and then, then specific to concrete then this is a specifically a tie which we have put to tie the two surface brick conductivity conductivity of this film condition we are defined for both I think we, we are done it I think it's completed so we'll just put a submit it and then just just wait for a result so once results is out it may just take a just one or two minutes so let, let's let's see what results we got again since it is not transient so you don't you don't have to define a density and specific heat and the other learning is how you can handle the, the interface between the two dissimilar mesh so it is completed we'll just monitor it's completed so we'll upload the results and we'll see how it looks so this is what is a heat flux heat flux going out and then we'll we'll see the field output temperature will may see how the temperature goes up so this is what and then we'll we'll see at the end how the temperature look like so this is how it's going it is inside it is almost like 834 outside 296 so then how the heat transfer and then then this is there and then the other important field output will put a heat flux and this is what is a heat flux mainly going through this corner the how maximum is going through corner that is the least resistance path what it find you can also map the vector for this and then you can just go to the plot symbol and on deform shape you can plot the how the heat transfer vector is going out so it's go and this is what actually you see the vector so so this was a quick video on a furnace and uh, thanks for watching it don't forget to like us and subscribe us in case you have any query or you want to get touch with us this is our email id abacus acumen 